Well, hey everyone, and welcome to our physics homework tutorial. Uh, we hope you find this tutorial helpful in your study of physics, and if you do, please visit our website at www.physicsvodcast.com. There you're going to find over 200 physics examples in every topic of physics. Uh, it's sure to help you get through that physics homework. We'll see you then! practice problem on resultant vectors. Uh, here we have two vectors. Notice that these two vectors are representing velocities. So a vector could be a velocity, could be a displacement, could be a variety of things, but these are velocities. 12 meters per second along the y-axis and 32 meters per second at 20 degrees above the x-axis. So the first thing that we're going to want to do here is sketch out a little diagram and it doesn't necessarily need to be perfectly to scale at this point, but enough to show us what general direction we're going to be looking at. We'll start with this vector here, 32 meters per second at 20 degrees above the positive x-axis. That would be off in this quadrant here. So we have 32 meters per second with an angle of 20 degrees. Our other vector is 12 meters per second along the positive x-axis. Now again, to really see what our resultant is going to look like, we need to draw these head to tail. So we have our initial vector drawn. Head to tail means that we go to the point where that vector ends and use that as our starting point for our next vector, which is on the positive y-axis. Positive y-axis is straight up. Uh, notice that that arrow should be a fair amount smaller than our original arrow, because we're comparing 12 meters per second to 32. So here is our second vector. And now we can begin to see graphically then where our resultant is. Our resultant starts at the same starting point that we use for our initial vector and ends at the ending point for our second vector. So we can kind of see, uh, generally speaking, where this vector is going to go. Now we need to start doing some calculations to see exactly what its value is going to be. Uh, notice that our first vector, the 12 meters per second, is pretty simple to work with. Uh, it's in the straight vertical direction, so it doesn't have any horizontal component at all. It just has a vertical component in the upwards direction of 12 meters per second. Our second one, though, the 32 meters per second, is really taking us in both directions. It's traveling to the right along the positive x-axis, so that would be in the x-direction, and it is traveling upwards, so that would be in the y-direction. Before we can combine, begin to combine the two vectors together, we need to know what these individual amounts are. So we have our angle of 20 degrees. We'll start with the x-component, and the x component would be the cosine or the adjacent side. So the cosine of 20 degrees is equal to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse, which is 32 meters per second. And that gives us an x component of 30.1 meters per second. We can repeat the same thing for the vertical component, except that the vertical component is opposite. So opposite would be using the sine, and that would be our vertical velocity divided by our hypotenuse of 32, and that gives us a vertical component then of 10.9 meters per second. Now, basically what we have is we have three components to deal with. We have one component in the horizontal direction, and then we have two components, the vertical component of our vector at an angle, 
and the vertical component of the vector that is heading straight up, those two together will provide the vertical component for our resultant. So now we can kind of draw a more detailed diagram of what the resultant's going to look like. So as we draw our resultant, and again remember that over here on our initial diagram, we have kind of a general picture of what it's going to look like. We know it's traveling to the right and it's traveling up. The horizontal component for that will simply be 30.1 meters per second because that's the horizontal component of our 32 meters per second and our other vector, vector doesn't have any horizontal component at all. Then we want to add the vertical components. We have the vertical component from that 32 meters per second. We just calculated the vertical part of that as being 10.9. And then we also have the vertical part that is added in from our other vector and that vertical component, and we can say that that's vertical component two, would be 12 meters per second. So now we get into the math part of it. These two together would be adding to give us a vertical component overall of 22.9 meters per second. So that is our vertical component of the resultant. Now we finally are ready to calculate that resultant velocity. We have a horizontal component and a vertical component, which means we can go back to the Pythagorean theorem, take our two values that we have in the x direction, that's 30.1. In the y direction, that's the sum of our two parts together, that's 22.9. And doing the Pythagorean theorem, we get a resultant value of 37.8 meters per second. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that unfortunately we are not quite done here because we also need to include the angle. Anytime you're dealing with a vector, your answer is not complete without an angle. And in this case, probably the easiest is to go back to tangent. Tangent is equal to opposite over adjacent. Our opposite side was 22.9. Our adjacent side is 30.1. And solving for the angle, we get an answer of 37 degrees. And that is above the positive x-axis. Thank you.